and grow YouTube show. Do you want to hit us with a couple of sustainable tips for plant parenthood for anyone maybe looking to try and live a little bit more mindfully in that capacity with their plant collection? Absolutely. There are so many things we can do in our plant hobbies or just our practices that will be a little bit better for the earth because at the end of the day, and I'm it's not lost on me that I am advocating for the earth through its consumption. Mm -hmm. And if I'm going to take something from mama earth, I got to make sure I'm giving it back in, in some form mm -hmm. or fashion. And, you know, and I talk about this a lot in, in the, the book and these chapters specifically, but if I can get you to care about that small plant on your desk, what, what is that next evolution? Can I get you to care about the big plant we all live on? So it starts yeah. with these little habits. So from a plant perspective, Eco-focused plant tips. I think number one, if you can do it, is to collect rainwater. Here in LA, mm. it rains maybe five times a year. Like right. it literally rained last me. weekend and I was ecstatic because we've had a record mm. drought. New York, it's a little right. bit different, right? But even so, just to, even if you're living in an apartment with a little balcony, put out a bucket, all right? Grab some rainwater, water your plants with it. They love it. The plants really respond quite well to it. Uh, I have rain barrels here that I've hooked up to my gutter system. You do? And yes. I How set hard those was up. that? How? Super... What is that? In a pr is that easy to do? Oh my gosh! It is the easiest thing to do. I I mean, this is like the most eco thing. I went on Facebook Marketplace, found someone who was selling extra rain barrels, went and okay. picked them up secondhand, and then I probably should have told my landlord about this. But like, I just rerouted the gutter. There's a gutter spout that went down. All it is is just a couple of. Uh, screws into the side of the house. And I just rerouted it to my rain barrel. And now when wow. I go out and wanna, I want to water, be it my outdoor garden or my indoor plants, I now have 100 gallons of rainwater that I can tap into. And it doesn't last forever, right? But I have enough that I can water plants for a good amount of time. So collecting wow. rainwater, especially in areas like California, which are so drought stricken and are experiencing historic issues related to the climate, I think is, is so, so great. Uh, on a smaller scale, tip number two, uh, just the nursery pots alone drive me insane. There's so much waste when it comes to these nursery pots. They are not conventionally recycled. Uh, so you can't just throw them in your, your blue bin and expect that they'll get repurposed for anything. So I try and use them as much as possible, either in uh, my own seed starting so they make great little vessels for just starting your seeds and you can just reuse them over and over and over again. I will oftentimes take cuttings, root them in there and then gift them to people. Um, mm -hmm. Not that I'm, you know, putting the responsibility on them by any means, but I'm certainly right. reusing something, right? <laughs> Passing it off. It's, it's better than like a plastic bag or something like that. And then just cachet, right? If, if I have a new plant that I'm starting out and I have a beautiful pot for it that doesn't have a drainage hole, I might just cachet with a nursery pot inside of it and no one would ever know the difference. So reusing mm -hmm. and repurposing those nursery pots is so, so important because, I mean, so little of our plastic gets recycled anyway, and knowing yeah. that this one is not at all recyclable just puts the onus on us to, to find new and creative uses for those nursery Definitely. pots. And then the, the last one, which I think is super fun and creative, um, is creating your own little plant sliders. So for anyone who's had hardwood floors and doesn't want to scratch them up, if you have big pots that you're trying to slide around, you go and you get the felt pads from the store and you kind of stick them on underneath and that way you can slide them around pretty easily without damaging your floors. And I'm looking at these things and they always come in like a big plastic bag. I'm like, oh, I hate this. I, I want to find a better way. And I went into my closet and I found an old pair of shoes and your shoes have shoe soles and cushiony bottoms that are pretty much the same thing. So I said, huh, and I just cut out a circle, super glued it to the bottom, and now I have sliders that I've made myself with shoes I wasn't wearing anyway, and now I've repurposed that without needing any additional materials at all. And I know I know, people listening have that pair of shoes in their closet that they oh, don't 100%. wear anymore, and there, there's cushion yeah. there, and you can, you can use that, be it you know, just for sliding or just creating uh, space between the floor. It's a, it's a great little tip that anyone can do to just, you know, make their, their plant movement and their plant pots a little bit easier to manage. I love that. I've never heard of that before. That's really <laughs> clever. 
Du, 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 du